guys, today's video is going to be a little different. I actually just recently finished a personal project that I've been working on in my very limited free time. Um, but it's pretty cool and hopefully you guys find it entertaining and can give it a try. Plus, I want to spend some time and walk through it just in case you guys want to spend some time and do something similar for yourself. So essentially what this app does, if you didn't already tell from the title, is that it basically allows someone to enter a username um, for a given Twitter user. So for example, at King James or at Barack Obama or at CNN. And basically what it does is it fetches people's Twitter ID. So a Twitter ID is a numerical representation of that Twitter user. So um, people change their Twitter handles all the time, but they remain the same Twitter ID. So it fetches their Twitter ID, uses that Twitter ID to load all of their tweets. I captured out 100 tweets just to uh, minimize the amount of time I guess needed to process each tweet. So it grabs the last 100 tweets and then it connects to IBM's Watson Natural Language Understanding service and then it basically gets the sentiment analysis results from Watson and then um, displays that on the front end. So hopefully um, you guys find it interesting and then I'll jump in and show you guys the demo as well as how you can set it up yourself because this is something that is free um, and is a pretty impressive personal project. This is what it looks like. Uh, this is what it looks like on mobile. Um, a major benefit of using Bootstrap um, if you aren't aware of Bootstrap, Bootstrap is a very popular, probably the most popular uh, CSS framework, so for styling. And the major benefit and the, the individual reason why I chose to use Bootstrap View was that it is mobile friendly, so this is like how it looks on mobile. And it also works perfectly fine on desktop, so that's definitely the main reason why I use Bootstrap View. But essentially, you just enter a username. So I'm going to enter my own username for uh, a given user's Twitter account. It is important to note that it only works for public Twitter accounts. Retweets are not analyzed, and it only does the last hundred tweets. Though uh, in my case, I don't even have I don't even have a hundred tweets on my account. And then basically, what it does is label each tweet. So this is the tweet content, and it labels each tweet with the dominating emotion in that tweet. So um, it also provides the sentiment scores, I guess, for each other, like sub-emotion. Uh, and obviously the dominating emotion is the one that has the highest score. So 0.58 is the max out of these five here. And then uh, once it's done doing the analysis, uh, this form opens up again, and you can just repeat the entire process. And it's a pretty simple, uh, simple full stack web app. I think overall, um, this is something that you can do pretty quickly. I think I already mentioned that in the intro, but it took me around two weekends and it certainly could take less uh, if I had worked a little harder and been a little more focused, I guess, when doing so. But I think you guys get the idea of what the app does. Um, I can do someone else just for reference. So I hope I spelled Barack correctly. Oh, looks good. And then, uh, so obviously this is a joyful tweet because I think Obama's trying to sound happy about his new podcast deal. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stop this and then um, walk through about walk through how you guys can get it set up. Um, Cause this is a pretty fun project and I think uh, if you wanted to add it to your resume, uh, and build off it or something, I think it could definitely be worthwhile uh, to try it out. So I have a public GitHub repo here, and I have the readme that explains how you set it up. This is a Node Express View app, so obviously being a Node app, I'm using npm for the packages. So npm install will install all the many, many dependencies um, for this app. NPM run build basically compiles and builds the front end to serve the to be served by the back end, and then this runs the back end, and the back end serves that front end that we just compiled in this step. So um, you have to run these steps in order if you're going to go with this route. So these all these NPM commands are to run the app locally on your own local 
host um, on a port on your actual machine. Whereas if you run it with Docker, you pretty much just build the image from the Docker file and then run that in a container on your computer. Um, whoop, typo here, but I'll change that. Um, and then that's running in a container on your computer. And that's about it, I guess, in terms of how to run it. Just pretty standard node app instructions. Though I would recommend using the Docker file since the benefit of using Docker is that you get a container running locally on your computer that is the same container that is being built on the cloud. I'll explain a little bit more about uh, the cloud like development side. I use Google Cloud Build and Cloud Run, um, but I'll get to that in a second. So first off, it's important to note that if you're to do any project that has the that connects, I guess, to the Twitter API as well as the Watson API, you're going to need your own credentials for each. So um, once you have your credentials, I've noted on here, you know, where to actually copy and paste it. So you just copy and paste it into here. Likewise, I, I've noted it in the api.js file. So to search to do, because I've noted where to actually just copy and paste it in, it should be pretty simple. Um, but for Twitter, you do have to apply for access. Uh, I think the goal behind having people apply for access is that um, I think they're having problems with people having like bought Twitter accounts, like totally like spamming and shit posting all over the place. So they're trying to limit the uh, number of developers, I guess, that have access to these Twitter APIs. But for something like standard where you have like a good intention use case like this, it should be no problem. I think it takes around a week to get approval. But once you do, um, you can log into your dashboard and then you'll create an app and then um, you will have your credentials here and they're listed under keys and tokens. And um, you pretty much can see it. I, I don't think you can actually see the access token once they initially create it, but you generate it, it'll pop up. Uh, you can copy and paste it into the environment, environment file. And then you should be good to go on that front. Next, I think uh, you might be wondering, I guess, why is there a need to have a separate Express backend uh, when it sounds like you would, you would assume initially that you can just make these API calls from the front end. You know, that's definitely something that Vue or any JavaScript framework can support, uh, front end JavaScript framework. You would expect it to be able to just make those API calls from the front end. But Twitter actually has quite a... Uh, I guess it was quite surprising to me that um, when I tried that, you get all sorts of cores errors. And surprisingly, I guess Twitter does not support cores. Um, and if you don't really know what that is, just I suggest you just watch like a YouTube video about it. But basically, what that means is you cannot make requests to Twitter's API from a web browser. I guess, yep, listed it right there. So to get around that, there's a couple of different ways. This person recommended using cores anywhere, which is, in my opinion, not like a real solution because anytime you're using cores anywhere, um, I think it's a pretty big security no-no in terms of any sort of production app. Um, yeah, they, they kind of explain it here. So the solution is to really just make these calls to Twitter's API on the back end. Hence the need for a separate uh, Express server as opposed to just using like a normal uh, like view CLI included server or, or the NPM serve module would work as well. But since we actually have a dedicated backend now, that's what I'm doing here in this in these routes. So you know router.get, I have it uh, with the authorization credentials here for the API key or token, whatever you call it. And then this is how it interacts with the Twitter API. It's all in this API.js file. And this API.js file is called by the front end. Um, so I just wanted to briefly address why we can't just make these API calls directly from the web browser. Um, and that's because of this cores um, 
course thing that Twitter doesn't support. So next up is the IBM Cloud side. So essentially all you have to do is create an account on IBM Cloud. Uh, I just have a free account. This is not like my work account since this is a personal project. Um, and then basically I think when you log in, you have an option or an area for services. You can also just search it, but basically under services, since we're using IBM's natural language understanding service, this is, or at least I'm using, an entirely like pre-trained whatever ships out of the box, I guess, for their service. Though I think um, on different plans you can customize or bring your own like custom model for natural language processing and natural language understanding. But as soon as you log in, you know, you have access to the credentials and you can just copy and paste it into the code as I have instructed you guys here. Um, and on the free tier, where am I? Oops. On the free tier, you should have no problem. Um, I, don't, I, I really don't think you would ever reach 30, more than 30,000 NLU items per month um, if you are just deploying this as a personal project like myself. Um, you'll see like the free has uh, different tiers and I don't think you even have to put in, you might have to put in your credit card, but it's highly, highly unlikely that you would get billed unless you're really just um, sending things to it out the wazoo. <laughs> so to connect, I basically just used the Watson API node SDK, and this is something that you can install with the node package manager. So I've already done that for the project, and then this gets installed when you call the overarching npm install uh, on, on the, in the root directory of the project here. But I did want to briefly explain um, how to do it. It's, it's not quite like um, using a normal HTTP request since there is uh, a Watson API SDK. Uh, you use that uh, to access the Watson API instead of making the actual HTTP request by hand. So um, yeah, I just emphasize that you know, for this simple project, I just use Watson Natural Language Understanding, which has quote unquote out of the box functionality. So this is not something that you have to train just to get it working since it ships with pretty default, I guess pretty standard um, model that, that works okay. So next up, um, I'm going to cover uh, actually deploying it to the cloud. I've chosen to use Cloud Run. So Google Cloud Run basically is a platform to deploy containerized applications. And the reason why I did this is because it is very, very efficient in terms of both cost and um, like performance. So uh, in the past, I wasn't really understanding, I guess, Docker and the concept of using containers and them being ephemeral. So the benefit of using Cloud Run as opposed to App Engine or Heroku, or really, uh, I mean, like, I guess, Webpack or Cloud Foundry on, on different cloud platforms um, do the same thing. But basically, App Engine, you don't have to bring your own containerized application via Dockerfile, whereas you do in Cloud Run. And the major benefit is that it is way more cost effective for, um, for small apps like ours. So Cloud Run is nine cents per month in this person's study, whereas something comparable um, where you don't have a containerized application that you bring yourself is eleven twenty nine and seven dollars a month. Um, so yeah, that's pretty impressive and enough motivation for you or anyone to start containerizing your applications with Docker. And essentially, the Docker file here is um, what you give to Google Cloud in the cloud build stage. And it basically goes uses this to create an image. And then from Cloud Run, it basically just spins up a container that runs that image um, on demand, which is why it's so cheap because with Cloud Run, basically, if no one's accessing the um, resource that you're trying to serve, basically it'll have zero containers for it and then it'll just instantly spin one up when you want it. It's pretty impressive as to like how they can have containers spin up that quickly, but um, that is why Google Cloud and other cloud providers are so good is that 
um, it's on demand and, and very efficient. So I'm, I'll briefly walk through the um, Docker file. It's very simple. Basically, I pull the base node image, specify the working directory, copy the package dependency list. So basically, npm install installs whatever it says to on here. Then copy over all the files. Um, I actually didn't set the environment var variable for the Twitter bear token. You'll see that um, I just have you guys just paste it directly in there. And then you build it, start it, and then um, that's about it. So let me see. I'll just show you guys that on Google Cloud. So on Cloud Build, this is where you actually set up the integration to GitHub if you would like to. So. For example, I guess um, like these are all the past builds and they're all triggered by different commits on GitHub. And then once you have once you have these builds completed, um, you can go to the cloud run side and then initialize your application and then basically edit and redeploy a new version. You can just choose the whatever build you want out of those builds that were kicked off automatically. So um, I'll just briefly show that, for example. So this is clearly the um, images that, that get um, created from cloud build. And these are all linked to the GitHub. So these link to um, different commits. And I guess 22 hours ago, I had the last commit. So I'd, I would just select it and then deploy it. Um, and you'll see it's, it's really quite quick to deploy um, deploy images with Cloud Run, so it should just take a second. Um, in the meantime, I all right now it's done. So very quick. Overall, I hope that gives you guys a brief overview about how you can do something like this. Again, I suggest you guys just spend more time looking at the repo if you want to do something similar. Since um, I think probably seeing the code in action is the way to go but definitely a fun definitely a fun project um and you guys can definitely do something similar so um i think that's it